Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to talk about the L2501 Kubota tractor and I also bought the backhoe for it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I want to show you guys how to take all the stuff off of the tractor that you need to and install the backhoe. It's, it's not that bad. Um, I actually got this from the Kubota dealer up the street. Um, bought it brand new. Came in a crate. Had to uncrate it here in the barn. Um, it was kind of a chore. It was a task. I'm not going to lie. It was had to take a lot of uh, creative thinking <laughs> to get around it. But uh, once it's all hooked up, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I got a couple little tips for you that's going to help make this job a little easier, taking it um, off and putting it back on. Um, and the first thing that we got to do is take off the three-point. You're going to be taking off the control, the top link here and your lower arms along with the uh, turnbuckles uh, the draw bar has got to come out um, and as you can see we got the subframe there so I'm gonna start getting to it I'm gonna set this up show you guys what we got to do okay so to get uh, to get started here you're not gonna need too much you're gonna need um, a pair of side cuts a 14 millimeter wrench you're gonna need a cold chisel and maybe a hammer Old chisel and a hammer and um, when I'm working from the back here I like to have something to sit on uh, because I'm an old retired mechanic and my knees kill me so I try to work whenever I can sitting down and then a um, nice little rolly cart here to put all of our stuff on so the first thing you want to do um, that I like to do is make sure that the three-point is all the way down that way when you're taking off all the like the quick hitch and the heavy stuff it's, it's closer to the ground Make sure you put everything back. Put it out, that way you don't lose it. Okay. Go ahead and set this right over here. ran into a problem. With it all the way down, this pin can't come out. But if you didn't know that you could do this, just pull it out like this, pull the pin out, piece of cake. Okay, next couple things, take the links off, I like to put the washers back on, put the pins back in. Okay. All right, now that you got to this step here, we got our links off. The last two connection points are going to be right inside here. This is what you're going to use the side cuts for. Is you want to get right here to um, take this cotter pin out. All right, guys. I don't know if you can see that. Right down here is the cotter pin that we want to get to. Um, and what I want to do with the side cuts is I'll first get it to where I can work on it. And then I'm going to use these to put the cotter pin together, kind of like that. Spin it around so I can grab this side. There you go. This part's just going to slide out. Don't drop your washer. All 
All right, so all that's left is gonna be the pin right here for the lower arm, and uh, I'm gonna take the draw bar out too. So this is what the uh, cold chisel was for, um, and your 14 millimeter. So this is a 14 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. So this is a blind hole over here. You can't get to it. Um, I've already cheated and put some grease on it. It's still a little sticky. So you're gonna go ahead and take this cold chisel and a small hammer. And all you're trying to do is get right in between there. You're right in between the, uh, the space between the pin and the, the axle of the frame of the tractor. Okay. Works pretty good. How many hours are on the tractor? About 170. Not too many. And then the whole bar is going to come out just like that. I like to replace the pin and reinstall my bolt. Okay, so here's what I ended up buying. The uh, BH-77. I uh, went down to the Kubota dealer and said, hey, thinking about getting a backhoe. Um, I got the L-2501. Um, and this is what they sold me. Came with the backhoe, got the 16-inch bucket, went ahead and opted for the mechanical thumb, and I love it. I tell you what, it comes in really, really handy. Um, and then we had to get the subframe, which you probably saw earlier. So the reason they have us do a subframe on these is, from what I understand, most of this is made out of aluminum, so some of the rear axle is. And um, just given the way the tractor is made, that backhoe is powerful enough where it needs the extra support because there's so much pull on it, I guess you could crack the tractor in half. Um, I did a bunch of research on it. Research, I mean, you know, messing around on Google. But uh, right in here... So right around this area here, they tend to kind of crack because uh, there's so much stress being put on it. And what I'm referring to by that is the three-point backhoes. Those are the, um, the the problem childs. And this was really attractive in the beginning uh, because it was about half of the price. It was made by Woods. It was pretty good. Um, but I decided to spend a little bit extra. I kind of thought about it as insurance. Um, let's see if I get a good shot of the bolts up there. But it was, it was insurance for me, knowing that I had the right stuff for it. So, it goes on the front up here. I didn't have to drill anything out. I did have to tap or chase some of the threads because of the powder coat on them. wouldn't go through. Um, and it goes all the way back there. I did take the back tires off, and I did have this suspended up in the air when I did it. Um, the, the kit comes with absolutely everything that you need to do this. It's actually three bolts that kind of come through the side here. Goes right into the frame for the ropes, ropes bar. Um, down there, you got another two that go into a bracket. And that bracket, oh, it's gonna be hard for me to get a shot of that, goes up to the underside of the tire. Let me go around this way. Let's see if I can't get it over here. There you go. There's a picture of the bracket. Um, those two holes there I had to chase the threads too because of powder coat. And then now that's the subframe. Okay, like I say, it came with absolutely everything that you need uh, to put this on. It looks a little goofy back there now. There's nothing on. Um, but don't be, don't be afraid uh, about losing your ability to run three-point implements. Um, I just got none running um, my three points. Okay, I got, I got a couple of things out there. Brush hog and... Um, box blade and some other stuff that I just had to use the other day. It is springtime out here in Michigan and I needed access to those things. But uh, I got some drainage work to do now so we're going to be hooking up the, uh, the backhoe. Um, oh, one last thing I forgot to show you. You have to run new hydraulics. Well, not all new hydraulics I should say. You're going to run a new um, Power Beyond kit is what they call it. So that's going to come with the backhoe. Make sure that the female fitting goes on towards the tractor and the male fitting is on the loose end of the hose here. Um, when I was three-pointing, using some implements, I ran the hose on the outside like this uh, because it was coming a little bit too close to the, to the um, three-point right here. 
So there's this little bracket that comes in with it. The bracket goes over to the subframe. Then you got the mount right here. Hose goes through it. It comes with a bunch of zip ties. And I don't know if you can see, but I just ran the hose right, right down up next to the filter. Okay. And that hose, one of them comes in right here. There's the other one that comes up. And that's going to go around. Tap right into your control valve up here. What's this hose right here? Okay, the direction show you putting this in is already there. The hose that was here, you're going to take that off. You're going to throw it in the garbage. You're going to take this hose and run it right to the back. And then the shorter one from the back, you're going to run right up to the bottom of your uh, filter. That's going to be it. Um, you're going to need to buy about a gallon of SUDT. I can hear people crying right now. Oh no, it's too expensive. But that's what I had to get to make sure this does come pre-charged. It comes with some oil in it. But there wasn't enough. Um, plus I changed the filter while I was at it. And um, I had to fill up the lines and everything. So it took me about an extra gallon. Um, this is how I'm storing it right now. Okay. It has, it has uh, squatted down a little bit on me. And it's only been off for about three days. So what I'm going to do next time is when I put it in this final storage, I think I'm going to put um, a jack stand or maybe some blocks of wood or something underneath here, here, maybe even the front because getting this thing lined up is not that hard, but it is critical and you want to make sure it's easy for you. Um, you are going to have to put the bucket on. You have to put the three point on. You're going to need to grease the whole thing. It does come pretty well greased. Matter of fact, this is mostly factory greased. I've greased it twice already. I've got about 20 hours on it so far. Um, I had a hydraulic hose blow out in the very beginning. There was something wrong. It was pinched in here. They went ahead and warrantied that for me. I did the work, but they were, they were gracious enough to warranty that claim for me. Um, and not really give me a hassle about doing the work at home. This fitting right here barely had any grease in it from the factory, and it was loose. But everything else has been pretty good. Um, we had to put the seat on. And this pedestal mount has to go onto here. But other than that, it's um, it's done. So we're going to go ahead and fire up the tractor, bring it back, show you how to hook it up. If you're wondering what these are, these are um, exhaust hanger players. They're used for taking off rubber exhaust hangers. Also really useful when um, the fittings won't cooperate. What's happening is that there was some pressure stuck somewhere. It was either in the backhoe or it was in the tractor side. So I just had to crack the nipple loose a little bit, let some of the pressure out. The fittings went right back together with no problem.
Well, guys, that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this answers any questions that are out there. I tell you what, before I bought this thing, I didn't see a lot going on out there about um, these backhoes and, the, and this equipment here. Um, everybody's got a reason why you shouldn't buy this. Oh, $8,000. Yeah, that's how much it cost. But it was the right decision because it was like insurance. There's not going to break my tractor. It's going to work. It's under warranty. I see these things going used for $7,500 with 200 hours on it. It's like, are you kidding me? I'll spend the extra $500 for that insurance, for that peace of mind. I know it's going to work. Um, it's been um, just a, a great tool to have. Uh, we had some drainage problems here. I had a foundation that was uh, caved in. I fixed that working on the drains. Um, like I said, there's a lot of a lot of stuff to do around here. We got about 15 acres. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, this thing's already paid for itself. Whenever I have anything to do, why not spend the money on the tools instead of spending the money on the labor? I mean, if you got the know-how and you've got some of the skill to do it, you know, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars maybe to have a tree fell. Well, can you buy a chainsaw for maybe 600 bucks in the equipment? I'm not saying that you should go out and cut a tree if you don't know how, but what I'm trying to say is saving the money on the labor doing it yourself um that's kind of where i'm at that's what i like to do so i hope this video helped you guys out um and in the future i'm going to be having some more about the common things that i'm starting to see but anyways uh thanks for watching and we'll see you later next time bye